please. Yeah, so I'm sorry for every other one, yeah. So, um, uh, my name is Wolfgang Lieberknecht. I live here in the middle of Germany at the former east-west border. Uh, our town is the most east uh, uh, border here in Hessen state. On the other side is Thuringer. And we have one small town nearby where the station was in the west and the main uh, um, town in the east. And uh, we invite you now because we think we want in Eastern on the 17th of April, make an international action there. We have seen that uh, when the last Cold War ended, uh, then they decided in the Charter of Paris to form a new in, uh, European order. One house, one common security system, including Russia, to overcome the East-West split. But we have seen it was not implemented. And uh, for Mr. Emmanuel Kant, we know not all people love peace. Some people love war because they make money out of wars. And they uh, uh, try to stop peace. And because they have other people who go to war, who have to kill and to die, uh, and they live in peace as good as in, in, in war. So they can risk always wars because they risk the life of others. And these other people pay with their taxes the costs of armament and at the end also for the depths of war. So, and now uh, the hottest point in the north where I see even a risk of a world war, if it goes very bad, is in the Ukraine. And today we will speak about it. What we can do to support peace in Ukraine, what we can do to prevent that it escalates to a world war, and what we can do for sustainable peace, how we can work together. And I really think we need international cooperation for it. So that we get stronger, that we learn from each other, that we exchange our informations, our, interpre uh, our interpretations of the situations and what we can do for actions. You all know one of the, of the reasons why they can bring us to war are the prejudices which come out of history and sometimes they are really direct promoted about each other. And if persons know from different nationalities, it is a chance to overcome them. Yeah, if you tell you, like me, uh, in the Gorbachev time, I went to Russia to uh, uh, say, now we have to use our chance to bring people together. We made a partnership with a town near Moscow, Istra. We went there with many people and many came to us in our families. You have seen the Russians were very nice people. All was I told us about them. Yeah, you have seen, you could uh, direct see it. It was wrong. And on this base, friendship can develop. One man came, said he was sitting behind atomic rockets in, in, in Russia. And now he said, I would have destroyed you all. And I see now you are so nice people. How could I have done this? And you all, uh, all know only by luck, two times we escaped an atomic war. From my point, I believe if we are lucky and this time it will not escalate to a big war, but um, the risk will be there many, many years uh, uh, ahead now, which we have to live in, where we have to find solutions. You all know since uh, 40, 1945, the West was dominated from the US. They integrated it with their leadership but since 1989, they also took the other part, which before was controlled from the Soviet Union. And uh, the big, both big parties in the United States, they really think they have the right to lead. Obama said it, we have the right to lead the world. Biden says it. And this is naturally against the UN Charter, where it's written equal rights for all states. But they think they have the right to do it and both big parties also say we have the right to use military violence to bring our interests to. I'm really convinced the dominate extremes in these both parties. There are people who are against it, no? clear, but they are in minority. And one of the reasons why they do it is what Eisenhower told us. In the Second World War, in the US developed a military industrial complex. So many people make money out of weapon production. 
and these people are very strong in every uh, um, in every part of us they get orders from the military complex so if you say you are against armaments they say do you want that we get jobless and then these people naturally also pay a lot to the politicians to represent them so it will be not easy i must really say not easy and our peace friends in us it's not easy for them uh, to overcome uh, this uh, this political stream that they have the right to dominate and put their things with weapons through but we know now russia is able because of their strong uh, atomic uh, armament especially uh, uh, to to uh, to 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 oppose and they are opposing now long time they were not opposing the first was yugoslavia which was against the international law which the west did libya iraq yeah they said they were against it but they were too weak to stop them they used and we must say the west used the freedom they had after the soviet union was away to make big interventions in the global south and reorder them for their interest and uh, but now russia says it is a point i think it was especially because of libya because uh, the west uh, promised um, they will only stop bombing for for gaddafi but they promised not to make a regime change and i think this was the point where the the, uh, the russia at the end lost any trust uh, uh, in the west and from this point they are not cooperating anymore they they, they think if we don't put a, a position they will take all and uh, this is our point they have uh, they, on this way they have destroyed our chances uh, gorbachev and russia gave us all what we wanted they said market economy democracy we built a new europe with the, on these values but we saw they want more they, uh, the us want global domination and now there comes a very bigger opponent to us this is china because they will economically pass the us and so they lose their fundament for global dominance the only point where still where they are still uh, dominating is with their military power so from this point i see uh, that uh, every year now every day nearly it can escalate in the uh, in the in the sea before china or or somewhere else and from this point we need a very very strong international peace movement because especially because of the atomic power uh, uh, power plants on the other side also yeah one officer told me what do you want with defense today if you have two power plants they put one bomb in the south of germany on an atomic plant one in the north and then the thing is finished yeah be also because of this uh, uh, atomic power stations which are also in the ukraine even a conventional conventional war can destroy and uh, and, and a living can't be possible anymore afterwards but even with these atomic bombs they both modernizing them yeah they they promised by international law uh, to stop them and even to uh, yeah to destroy them but they don't do it they modernize them and put a lot of money inside so the risk continues and now uh, one good point is uh, these wars can affect us all and every human being who is a bit clear must say my life and the uh, uh, the life of my children are in danger now we have to get active mr kant told us in his perpetual war peace is not a donation you have to work for it uh, you have to work for it otherwise you don't get it so we have to find ways now how we work together to get peace and there are naturally special uh, um, uh, special ways in different uh, in each country of us where we have special inside conflicts there are the global conflicts but there are also special which can escalate even in uh, each of our countries so we can learn from each other how we make our countries to peace countries and we can work globally how we um, how we handle the global risks and very important is we need uh, we we have to bring china and russia and us together we have to see how and one basic point is bringing people together and on these personal relationships we can create together every one of us can work for it we can create a base for sustainable peace and we have to develop information you know uh, julian assange says the war starts with lies and it is true because common people they can't never profit from wars so they lie 
they allow you about the, the other side. So first of all, we have to bring the facts on the table. And secondly, we need an international discussion how we interpret them and with which actions we can bring our governments and the United Nations to do really peace work and settle one after the other conflict. For me, I see in the, uh, in the UN, uh, in, in Ukraine, we have uh, with Minsk too, we have a plan for peace. And it was not the US who pushed it, you know it. It was France, Germany, Russia, and Ukraine who did it. But you know, uh, it is international law because the UN Security Council you know, adopted it. But uh, uh, especially the Kiev government, how I see it, maybe you already know it better, and the US uh, more or less ignore it. And uh, maybe also Russia, partly. No? This, uh, 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 maybe Yuri knows, knows it better. What I uh, said, uh, we should maybe make um, a network uh, from the civil societies how to implement Minsk too, and see that we exchange our ideas, that uh, we come in dialogue with our governments and see that we push it and try to win more people, that they are active for it. So now we come to the first point. I hope this uh, uh, gives you a bit an overview for what we are standing here. We have here in the middle an, an old factory and try to develop a place where international people can meet internationally, where we, we have rooms where people can sleep and work for some time together. And this we want to build because we think beside online, personal contact and meetings are very necessary for, for trust building. Now this, this I really am convinced that some days you are together with people and this you get another feeling with whom you can work and what you can bring forward. And this, we are eager to develop this here in this old factory in the middle of Germany. Good, to now, today, our main topic is Ukraine. And, um, uh, uh, but before, you know now already, we, uh, we uh, put it in video and we will publish it only that everyone knows. And if you want to speak after, make a go on reaction and take up your hand, uh, not your personal hand. It should be really the sign that I can see. And then we take one after the other uh, um, uh, to speak. Yeah, now um, our, um, our main person today who gives us uh, a direct overview of what's going on in the Ukraine is uh, Yuri, peace activist in, in the Ukraine for the pacist, pacifist move, movement. So, but he will more introduce himself and uh, uh, then we will discuss f uh, these points, uh, what I said first, what, how we support peace in Ukraine. Secondly, what we can do to escalate it, that it doesn't escalate to a world war, which chances we have, and thirdly, how we come together to develop sustainable uh, peace and a base for it. Greg, what do you want to say? You wanted to say something? Okay. Well, go, going on the, the theme of actions ra rather than uh, this good guys, bad guys, I think the most pertinent example of that in history was the 25th of December, 1914. When the German and British forces stopped killing and butchering each other and joined in the middle and celebrated Christmas. Yeah. That was a far greater threat to the powers that be than all of the fighting and the butchering. Excellent. I agree, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, thank you very much, Greg, for that um, intervention. <laughs> very welcome. Um, I was watching an interview um, between um, an American reporter who, who was interviewing, uh, I, I say interviewing President Putin, it seemed more like an interrogation than an interview. But anyway, um, President Putin um, said um, about the US, this full spectrum dominance that the US um, pr uh, preaches, all right? And um, Putin said, now, one point I want to make about uh, Mr. Putin, he always refers to others as partners. He's always saying, our partners, our colleagues. The others don't speak of him like that. This is, this is something that uh, is a lesson they should learn from him. 
in respect. However, this reporter was interviewing um, Putin, who I say interrogating him more like, and um, was talking about you know Ru Russia, um, Russia's all the sins that Russia is committing in the world today, and um, wanting to be dominant, you know, wanted to take over the world and all this. And Putin says something really interesting. He said, um, he said, I don't want the US to be defeated at all. I've got no interest. I don't want anyone to be defeated because we can all win if we have equal parity. And he was uh, saying that the US, he wants the US to have a, an equal standing, all right, in a, in a multipolar cooperation for global security and prosperity. Now, Putin is working um, um, with his Eastern partners very successfully with uh, the, uh, the, the St. Petersburg Economic Forum, the Valdai Discussion Club, or all these, where have all these people coming to these um, discussion meetings where um, he, Putin just takes his, his seat just as one of many. NATO is advising Zelensky to scrap the Budapest Memorandum. Now, this Budapest Memorandum is is the uh, an arms control treaty, uh, not to have not to have um, nuclear weapons in Ukraine. And NATO advisors are telling Zelensky, "Look, let us come in. You know, shove this uh, this agreement. You know, tear it up and throw it away, like the Americans have done with all the agreements of of non proliferation." Um, so he said to her that the arm itself with short range nuclear missile, none of this is reported in the mainstream media. We don't hear about this. Meanwhile, the UK media campaign continues unabated, providing detailed plans of military strategies by Putin. So that's the first one. Now, the second thing, I won't, I won't take up too much time. Just one last, um, last thing I want to mention to you is this. And this is, this is connected with what um, Wolfgang was saying, I'll just get this file up. Unfortunately, you can't see it. But, um, West, Western imperial ambitions failed in Iraq, Libya and Afghanistan, and they will fail regarding any attempt to subjugate Russia and China. NATO and the West are powerless to initiate a hot war because Russia is in alliance with both China and Iran, and the USA would invite mutually assured destruction, even if its campaign of sanctions is powerless to destroy the Russian economy. Because through, its because through Putin's fostering of trade and commerce agreements with his many partners, it can be said to have developed a fortress economy. The illegitimate sanctions the US is threatening on Russia is designed to undermine the Russian economy. However, the Eurasian Economic Union is a peaceful trading co coalition which is unified in building up economic defense in the face of continuing NATO aggression. Import substitution is a means of bypassing sanctions. Putin's focus is on developing economic growth cooperation through 30% foreign sector investment, integrating all countries within a union state. 28 programs for the integration of economic development have involved discussions with the prime ministers of these countries over more than eight conferences, eight conferences in the last year. President Putin stated that joint measures are being taken to minimize the effects of these sanctions by means of the integration within a greater Eurasian economic vision with a single market for goods and labor. This can ensure mutual security despite the presence of NATO, which has encircled Russia around the Western border with European countries. Russia has provided schedules for military drills on its own territory, which international observers, including those from the OSCE, have been allowed to visit. Military attaches from other countries have confirmed that Russia poses no threat to anyone as they are purely defensive measures. As Foreign Secretary Sergei Lavrov has stated, if the truth were to be known, it is the West that is preparing the ground for conflict by engaging in an information war, spreading rumors of aggressive action by Russia, 
such as invasions, bombardments, and chemical attacks. Even so, Lavrov also expressed that an information war is better than an actual war, as when there is, even though an information war is taking place, it still leaves open the possibility for negotiations in the interest of bringing others to recognize the fact that the republics of Donetsk and Lugansk have a right to independence and autonomy. However, it is the refusal of the West to engage in any negotiation with these republics that is born of a fear that if they did so, it would legitimize the claims of these regions to the right of self-determination. Lavrov explained the danger of two militaries that facing each other in such a standoff could bring about an inadvertent firing of a missile, thus starting yet another war which could have catastrophic consequences. He stated, what is needed for both sides is to get around the table and develop a common narrative that would address the problems that arise when each side is unwilling to address the concerns of the other. However, Lavrov is being very generous to a fault here in light of the fact that the intransigence is more on the part of NATO, which has been the primary cause of all this instability due to its violation of an agreement made back in 1991 that it would not expand its forces any further east than the Oder River, when in fact NATO has continued to push eastwards and is now encircling Russia. Back in 1991, when Baker promised Gorbachev that NATO would not expand one inch further to the east, it was not put into writing. However, with regard to agreements for non-proliferation that had been made since, the US has violated each and every one of them and now present themselves as no longer being worthy of trust. This has done little more than push Russia, China and Iran into a coalition that threatens US global primacy. President Putin has stated that there are gross violations of human rights in Ukraine, which has a military that is functioning as a proxy of NATO, even though Ukraine is not a member of the alliance. Um, I think it's true, but I might be wrong. So I'm always willing to be corrected. You can do later on. I'm just going to tell you this now. The Ukraine military, which accommodates the Azov Battalion, a right-wing neo-Nazi white supremacist organization is violating the terms of the Minsk agreement by shelling the infrastructure of independent republics of Donetsk and Lugansk, damaging transport systems, basic utilities of gas and electricity. There is verifiable video evidence of this, which has been broadcast on reliable news channels. The region is fraught with tension and terrified civilians are suffering from this bombardment. Denis Pushilin, head of the self-proclaimed Republic of Donetsk is evacuating women, children and the elderly across the border to the Rostov region of Russia, where sanctuary has been provided by a coordinated program of food and shelter. Regarding the situation in the Donbass, Ukraine is refusing even to enter into any dialogue over this conflict, which has been going on now for over eight years now. An independent journalist on the ground by the name of Denis Roper responded to Blinken's acu accusation of Russia planning to conduct a false flag chemical attack by confirming that the attempt to blow up a chemical plant in Donetsk had been thwarted by the army. He explained that while Kiev is a signatory to the Minsk agreement, it appears unwilling to abide by its terms, while Russia, which is not even a signatory to this pact, is continually blamed for violating it. Another fact that has not been reported in the Western media is that of a report by observers working for the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, stating that 75% of civilian casualties are a result of military action by the Ukrainian army. He spoke of the importance of the people of Donetsk and Lugansk standing up against the efforts of NATO to drag UK, Ukraine into the orbit of Western imperialism. I'm nearly finished. As for attitudes in the UK, the Prime Minister Boris Johnson is following suit with the Hawks of Washington, with a compliant media that is marching in lockstep, supporting all the mischief that is being committed by NATO. The BBC, The Guardian, The Daily Mail, The Sun are all complicit in a campaign 
based upon an obsessive lunacy of bellicose propaganda that is serving only to deliberately escalate all this tension. Now for some hope. However, in the face of this seemingly overwhelming tide of hysteria, a great number of peace movements across the world, supported by independent media outlets and independent journalists, reporters and bloggers, are speaking out against all of this fear-mongering and belligerent rhetoric, endeavouring to inform as many people as possible who are still being taken in by the falsehoods and deceit which have been put upon them. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Who wants to, to speak to it, to the, the points he made? Oh, well, a lot of this is what you, you see superficially, because it, as Lavrov noted, this is an information war, and quite often information wars precede actual wars. Well, in fact, they invariably do, and it's been done not the first time in history. So uh, th this is the main point. But you can certainly see a, a vast discrepancy in the quality of the political leadership. I mean, Lavrov versus Truss or Blinken. Uh, I mean, th th these people are not in the same league. Uh, and certainly, if uh, Biden or Johnson with Putin, I mean, these do not measure up. Mm. But I think that this is an indication of civilization and imperial decline. And they, they, they understand this, but they cannot accept it. And one of the worst things, the most dangerous things in any generation is an empire in decline because they will grasp at anything uh, and drag it down with them just to try and stay on top that little bit longer. And this is what I see. But the bluff has been called. And I think the first indication of the bluff being called was when Trump uh, authorized the murder of Soleimani in uh, Iraq. The, the Iranian general, uh, when he had the drone kill him at the Baghdad International Airport. And the Americans did not expect a response because historically there was no response because uh, everyone feared them. But what they got was a very decisive response to which they did not respond. And this is what I found interesting, if we want to put it like this, because if they felt as confident as they had before two decades of endless wars, which were wars of choice and not necessity, they would have attacked Iran. Then we have Afghanistan, which made the evacuation of South Vietnam look uh, organized and uh, rational. And now you, you've got Ukraine, but the issue with Ukraine it's not only about Ukraine. Uh, th this, this is coming to these larger geopolitical and geoeconomic questions. Uh, and this concerns not only Ukraine, but Russia and also Germany. Because the, 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 everything is being tied together by the US. They're trying to tie these things together. Well, uh, well, I mean, Bernie put all those things, these stupid, uh, maps uh, of, uh, I mean, my son could draw better war maps than these things. <laughs> and um, anyway, I mean, you, you got the, these things. I mean, th this is all supposition. It, it's all the, the, this kind of hysterical war propaganda, but it's aimed at the bigger question, which is beyond Ukraine. It, it's about keeping a relative advantage of US power and influence in Europe and keeping others out of Europe. And of course, keeping Germany down. I mean, you, Ukraine as it stands is a client state, but Zelensky has a huge problem because he's trapped. I mean, he, he's smart enough to know 
uh, sorry for the, the, the crude American expression that he is screwed, uh, because he knows if he keeps playing this American game, the economy will collapse. Well, what's left of the economy will collapse. And then he might actually have a genuine color revolution from below, not from beyond the borders. And he would fear that. But also, if he refuses to play the game, and I mean, he's already uh, argued with Biden and said, ask the Americans to provide evidence of this inevitable invasion. But if he does not play the game, then the problem is he might get a spontaneous color revolution. And I think this was marked by two things. One, at the beginning of this, Poroshenko returned. Why did Poroshenko return? There has to be some reason behind it. It's not a coincidence. And also, like in 2014, before this nonsense started, you had the visit of the CIA to Kiev. In 2014, this was to issue the orders for the ATO, the anti-terrorist operation in eastern Ukraine. Now, they have new orders, but I mean, yeah, this is to keep Germany down, Russia out, and the US in Europe, and to keep that what they have enjoyed uh, for so many decades. This is what's happening in Ukraine, if which, uh, which is ignored by Western media, the deployment of at least half the strength of the Ukrainian army outside Donbass, uh, which is why you have the Russian forces moving on their side of the border uh, as a signal. If you do that, there could be a rerun of 2008 in Georgia. And yeah, so everything is there. But the problem being, I have more faith in Russian leadership being um, taking a more uh, sober attitude to this, because basically, the, the Western leaders I have zero confidence in, and there are very few people who do, uh, especially after their performance uh, during this uh, pandemic. And the, the, even the history before that, they have a very bad track history. But I better let Yuri uh, get his, his word. Conflict. United States said uh, these Ukrainians uh, have sovereignty. They uh, uh, should be allowed to join NATO if they wish. Uh, and we are supporting their sovereignty. Russia says uh, uh, that these people, uh, uh, Russian people in Donbas are suffering from this neo-Nazi uh, uh, in Kiev. By the way, there are neo-Nazi on both sides. Uh, Azov Ukrainian side, Varyakh uh, uh, Battalion Russian neo-Nazi. Uh, uh, right sector Ukrainian Nazi uh, and uh, uh, Russian national unity Russian Nazi. Yeah? So it is Nazi in uh, separatist republics of Donetsk and Lugansk and Nazi in Kiev regime, in Kiev government. Uh, and, and of course, uh, uh, in uh, uh, among uh, 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 different spectrum of uh, uh, political um, uh, movements, uh, there are uh, far right, uh, just right, center and, uh, and so on. Uh, left, far left, and so on. Uh, what what uh, I'm trying to say uh, is uh, if we uh, uh, accept this notion of sovereignty, it will be disaster because uh, sovereignty uh, is uh, uh, sovereignty means you can do everything uh, on your land. Uh, you are the law, not uh, law is above you. Uh, but uh, you are the law. It is sovereignty, yeah. Uh, and and this is problem uh, because you uh, can not uh, even uh, for all the people uh, uh, give this uh, right to do everything. Uh, uh, um, one man or group of men or whole people uh, should be subject to law. Uh, 
uh, all people uh, should uh, um, uh, understand uh, that some principles of justice are uh, above peoples and above whole humanity. Uh, uh, and uh, Emmanuel Kant knew it. Uh, uh, that's why this principle of uh, um, uh, autonomy of will uh, is the supreme moral law. Uh, and uh, 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 individual will, collective will, no matters. Uh, uh, your will should be subject to reason. And this reason uh, uh, means uh, justice. It means that you are not uh, asking for this insane idea of sovereignty. You are not, uh, 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 nobody should be sovereign. Uh, uh, and everybody should be uh, autonomous, autonomous people, uh, autonomous persons, autonomous groups, and so on and so on. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, current crisis uh, uh, is uh, uh, um, uh, emerged when uh, United States and uh, Russia tried to, to promote uh, uh, sovereignty of their uh, uh, generated, supported their clientele. Uh, 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 United States created their neo-Nazi clientele in Kiev and claim uh, this clientele is sovereign, and Russia created their clientele in Donetsk and Luhansk and claim this clientele is sovereign. Uh, 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 and, uh, uh, it is leads to reckless and dangerous uh, uh, behavior. And uh, 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 when we talk about it, we should understand uh, that uh, 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 governance by violence, by creating military alliances, uh, by uh, um, claiming spheres of influence, uh, uh, regional or global uh, using armies, uh, uh, it is a way uh, to permanent war. Uh, 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 Orwell uh, in uh, his uh, um, uh, Anti-Utopia uh, 1984 uh, wrote about uh, this uh, uh, permanent war uh, between three uh, uh, super states, uh, Eurasia, Astasia, and uh, Oceania. Uh, and uh, 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 it is ultimate result of this notion of uh, absolute sovereignty. Uh, uh, to, to move uh, from permanent war to permanent peace, uh, we, we should develop uh, uh, technologies of uh, non-violent governance. Basically, we have a culture of violence and culture of peace. Uh, and uh, uh, it is uh, both cultures are, are widespread and some people share both. Uh, uh, some people are consistent pacifists. There are few. Some people are consistent, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 proponents of uh, uh, war against all, uh, 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 absolute war, uh, or li all life is war, and so so, so eternal warriors, yeah, eternal warriors and uh, eternal pacifists. Uh, but but uh, uh, both are few and uh, uh, the most of people are just sharing some ideas from peace culture and from uh, uh, culture of violence. And uh, 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 we have uh, in long term run uh, 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 to, to uh, develop peace education uh, uh, to uh, uh, help pe uh, people uh, to um, uh, use uh, in uh, their life technologies of uh, uh, non-violent uh, um, uh, pursuit of happiness, uh, non-violent governance, uh, and so on. Uh, uh, this be um, uh, the main task of peace movement. Not in this uh, just conflict. Uh, of course, this conflict uh, uh, needs it because uh, Ukraine and Russia lacks uh, uh, peace culture. Even Germany or United States with all this war machine uh, in society, uh, uh, you have uh, more developed peace culture uh, than Ukraine or Russia. So Ukraine and Russia uh, 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 even don't have a mass peace movement, uh, um, uh, non-partisan. And to develop peace movement, uh, uh, we need to develop uh, peace education. Uh, uh, we, uh, we need develop uh, these institutions helping people to understand that peace is real. P peace is not only a dream and uh, 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 it is a delusion that you can achieve peace by violence. Uh, in fact, you can achieve peace only uh, by technologies uh, of uh, uh, non-violent uh, life. Okay. 
So, Anthony. I'm here. Yes. Hello. Yes, Hi there. it's your turn. Um, thank you so much, Wolfgang. Um, I've got to leave shortly, so please forgive me. But Wolfgang, uh, I am immensely grateful to be with you. Uh, and Bernie, thank you so much for organizing this because an extraordinary, interesting discussion. Um, and I've agreed with absolutely everything that has been said. It's made a great deal of sense. However, I have a slight sense that I'm in a really echoing chamber again. Um, and the theme coming out of this for me, uh, and I kept hearing things like uh, people together, people on earth, Bernie's saying our behavior, how do we find the common ground? And Yuri, you've just repeated this with the same thing about people coming together. Uh, and I suppose out of this meeting, I will love to hear the proposals of how we get disparate people, whether they are, you know, city traders and people on a universal credits, Muslims and Christians, all of us speaking from the same hymn sheet, in other words, um, having a common ground, something upon which we agree. Uh, and uh, you have all touched upon this, this idea of the spirit of peace. Um, and how we're able to unite. And so this is the thing which will inspire me most of all. I look forward to, to hearing this because I don't think otherwise, however brilliant the individuals all over the world and however inspired the organizations, unless they're able to come against this, as you well described it, this military industrial complex, which is now so dominant, so much in control, unless we're able to find a force of of peace to equal it i don't see a way forward yeah wolfgang yes i 100 uh, percent agree and uh, the idea of vijay yeah to make to to promote peace ministries and peace centers everywhere that out of the society it is somehow for me a contrast structure to this military industrial complex uh, which we really need now we have to see both we have to analyze uh, the ongoing interests which are dominating and on the other end we have to develop something positive to overcome it a new culture of peace both is necessary yeah if you are just blind and said yeah peace culture peace culture but you don't see the current things and the cousin conflicts you need special answers also for nearly every conflict yeah this so-called war on terror we need a special answer for it uh, nearly for every country of them yeah they are different but we have to work on it and we can do it only together because we are few. We have to bring our competence together, how we reach the people also and get a mass movement is very necessary. No? Now, exactly, you see now how weak we are when you see these warm, warm, war voices. Yeah, the medias, how they have them in their, in their hands. Yeah, here in Germany, nearly all newspapers uh, are uh, pointing to Russia, nearly all. There's nearly no one anymore which is uh, preaching for peace. And even if you say something, Putin, we have to understand him. Even this, you are more or less out already. And to balance the things, they are very, very strong. So we have to really, out of our small sources, come together because we speak for the interests of the people. This we have to see. Because this, even this, amount, uh, what's, uh, the, all this selling, uh, buying of weapons, it costs us all social and environment. Yeah, uh, uh, the money which we need to stop climate uh, uh, change for social perspectives. And one of the points why people, um, uh, 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 why they can win them, we have seen it in Germany in the world economic crisis, yeah, where people now uh, go behind people who said, yeah, this minority is responsible, the other country is responsible because of their own frustration in social life. And this is now growing everywhere. And people are perspectivelessness, and then they walk behind extremists. Now we have it always in the history the same. So we have also somehow even unite with the social movements for the social rights of people yeah, to counter this extremist. Now this is also from Vijay, one of his ideas of the peace centers, as far as I got it, to, to give hope to the perspective, uh, those without perspectives even to organize something concrete. But now let's come maybe to the uh, my, our concrete proposals. 
Also I have two proposals. One is that we say now we have to make a civil unification to implement Minsk II and to win people of different countries with Ukrainians, maybe with Russians, who discuss how we can help to, to implement it and to stop this escalation of war. Which I, yeah, okay. So the, the ideas of American is the is following. Who rules Euro Asia will be dominant in the world. And if they come together, uh, Russia and Western Europe, we can't dominate the world anymore. So, and even from the, this is a strategic thinking as I got it, since many, many, Przezinski was one of the, the persons uh, who explained it. So they had to split Russia and Western Europe. Our foreign minister who was inside Mr. Genscher, who was inside uh, these contracts, he uh, shot before he died. He said he did not know that there were people who just wanted the north, uh, uh, this west east border direct at the Russian border. He did not know it. He thought we want now a uh, united Europe. But then, even at the end, he was too naive to see that people, if united Europe, is not what they want because they lose hegemony. hegemony. So, but uh, now, uh, uh, Bernie and Vicha, you wanted to talk. Yeah? So the, the problem here is that if, how about if we sent a naval ship in New York Harbor, for example, or we sent around Canada or Alaska, some ships with armor and we, we pressure USA to do things. And that's what exactly what's happening in, uh, because NATO is the mouthpiece and also the arm, uh, uh, arm of US uh, deployed in Europe for constraining the powers of Russia. And China is embroiled, or there are around, uh, John Pinger said there were around 365 bases around China. So not for them not to go and indulge in a war or something. Else. So we should know what in reality we are facing. It is the war machine, as all of you have said, and the war profiteers. And UK here, and USA, and its allies, they're all ready to go to war. Because uh, unless and until they do not go into war, you cannot have 24 hours, the weapon factories manufacturing weapons. So now coming to how we as peace activists, what we, we can do and what we should be doing. Of course, we are all in our own countries signing petitions for people not to go to war, but I would go a step further and we should take responsibility as peace activists to write to our legislators. So about what? That, that there are spheres of influence. So Ukraine and all those countries around Russia, Russia being a very powerful big country has spheres of influence. So what Russia is saying, don't come too near to, to, for NATO to expand that part that we cannot uh, uh, tolerate it. Same as I said, if we send naval ships around US and Canada and try to control those territories and, or, and in Latin America, because that is the sphere of influence of USA. They, they consider Latin America and its countries as their power base because they keep interfering with the regimes of or governments of uh, uh, Venezuela and and uh, and everywhere in in uh, in in uh, Latin America. So this is the first problem. So we peace activists have a bond bonden duty to get all this 
message of truth to the in in the papers or in the in the media and secondly i would say let us write to the press and our leaders about a certain things which we should be doing as peace activists one we advocate that nato should not seek further expansion or engage in aggression russia must and i must say that lots of people have been praising with russia but russia is not a <laughs> would say a full of virtue russia has got must also cease interference and aggression against countries is deems to be within its sphere of influence as i said before and secondly let's write to the press and to our government that all troops should be withdrawn and supply of weapons military and equipment as uk because i belong here we have been supplying to ukraine usa has been supplying uh, military and and weapons to ukraine we need to stop that uh, yeah and then but what we need to do is both the countries nato and russia need to stop military exercises because it's nothing but aggravation trying to tell people we are so powerful we can attack you any time we like so these are some of the and also we need to have those recommit ourselves to the treaties conventional forces in europe demilitarizing europe through disarmament inspections etc and also it has been reported widely in the press that are about cyber attacks which nobody has talked about but cyber attacks are another way of sending military to a country if you finish the grid of a country nobody can have electricity you can many many ways turn down the computers or whatever and this is the critical infrastructure of a country countries no longer can run without this infrastructure so these cyber attacks we must must think is a very serious matter and we need to pursue in good faith an international agreement within all the countries that we should not have cyber attacks um, uh, at all and one more last thing we should talk to our governments all which some of you have alluded already that all these parties in the dispute russia us uh, ukraine and the others they should sit down there is there is nothing can be gained by a, a major war or third world war it may not go to that and we don't want it to happen because remember the first world war second world war thousand year war we have always had wars in europe only after the uh, uh, formation of european union which i have written a full book peace beyond borders we should, people should read that how european union was formed and why we have relative peace in europe for the last 75 years so that peace is is we don't want that peace and we don't want blood shed on our streets because we have seen enough blood sheds in the first and the second world war where millions and millions hundreds of millions of people were slaughtered and we don't want a repeat of that whatever happens we need to have a peaceful resolution to this and the points are just made just jot it down and get on to your governments and say we we uh, the the last thing we want is war on over those steps thank you what what path do you take do you take the path of uh, re relational reconciliation and this humanism uh, which people are talking about not as russians as germans as americans as these different little groups that can be divided and manipulated against one another but 
rather as a collective idea of people without the, this, the, these barriers between them. No, they did not. They chose it to celebrate it as a, a victory of Americanism over the world and a free ticket to expand with no constraints on them. They even issued military medals, victory in the Cold War <laughs> to, to the soldiers. So, I mean, this is where it leads you. And now, I mean, when I switch on the, if I switch on the TV, I generally do not like to watch the news too much. I'm not as tolerant as Bernie. Uh, um, I, I kind of get these moments where I flashbacks from watching the Peter Sellers movie, Doctor Strangelove. Have, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's because it's getting too realistic these days. It's no longer satirical. It's pretty much real life, unfortunately. I agree um, about your comments about um, the way the, uh, the view America has taken of itself since, uh, well, in fact, it goes back before the Cold War. I mean, it goes back to the bombing of Japan. All right, this view that, you know, we, we are the boss now. But is that um, uh, Vladimir Putin is uh, uh, almost uh, continually frustrated in his attempts to reassure others that he is concerned, you know, he's been elected um, president of the Russian Federation to look, you know, he said, I, I have been, to quote him, I have been elected president of the Russian Federation to look after the interests of my of the people of Russia, all right? Now, this, um, in, uh, the interests of the people of Russia include safety and security. I mean, he's got a, he's got a lot of a, a big task to clear up the mess that Yeltsin left, all right? All the corruption that, uh, and I don't forget, the Yeltsin was planted by uh, the CIA. All right, I've done. I've written an article about this, which I can make available to anyone who's interested in reading it. It's quite a long article, but um, that uh, that was a, a Clinton administration-inspired move to get get uh, to turn Russia into into a, an imperial capitalist, privatized, and that's where the well, there the oligarchy arose from. So Putin's, you know, he's dragged Russia out of the mud, basically. You know, all this mess. People are being paid. They're getting their pensions. They're getting their wages. It's, things aren't aren't perfect, no. But um, he still deals with with there are mafia groups in Russia. He gets blamed for it when there's poisonings and this and that. Putin's always the, the culprit, you know. But the point I'm making is that what the USA fails to um, to want to even address is the fact that President Putin can be can be concerned about the national, you know, the security the, the, of his country. When the Americans, the, the NATO talks about security all the time, you know, they, 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 security, freedom, democracy, all these, all these um, euphemisms that they throw about, you know. So I, I think that um, we have to be fair to um, Mr. Putin. Where, you know, if we say that uh, Russia and America are, are warmongers, you know, they're, they're mutually warmongering each other, you know. Um, what, did, what did Putin say when... Um, when um, he was threatened, he said, well, he said, um, if, if you do start a war, we are not going to start a war. But if you do, if you fire a missile, we will retaliate. And if we do retaliate, you will all be, we will rise as martyrs to heaven and you will all drop dead without time to repent. Well, see, this sort of language, I agree, is not, um, it's not productive. It doesn't, it, it doesn't, um, um, you know, cool things down, you know. So I think that if, if there can be some kind of um, discussion, you know, we talk about these agree this Minsk agreement, yes, very important. We also need to have agreement between um, USA and Russia. Um, and this is where I think Germany has a big role to play, particularly regarding the uh, energy crisis in Europe, which is being aggravated by the fact that the Americans want to close down the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. But that's that's a topic for another, maybe another meeting. All right, <laughs> there's a lot there, a lot in that. So all all I'm saying is that now um, about um, what Wolfgang said, very important. You know, 
people, Putin, Putin is deserves to be understood. You know, he has a, he has a right to be understood by others, and he's he's not being allowed to be understood by others because as soon as, like you say, as soon as you even mention his name, you know, you're a, you're a communist or you're <laughs> whatever you know, whatever label they want to throw at you. So um, Russia's concern about its its um it is it's secure the security you know the prosperity um sanctions sanctions will have no effect on russia i'll tell you why because putin has, has developed while this is this has not been going on in the last few months sorry because for over a number of years now through the uh, st petersburg international economic forum through the valdai discussion club and other um assemblies where Putin sits in the middle of about 15 people at a table completely, um, it, you know, he doesn't, he's not running the meeting. He's not, uh, he allows everyone equal um, say, because all he's interested in is trade. Um, see, trade, trade is a way, trade and commerce and culture, culture. Um, and, you know, like, like, um, like, like you said, um, Greg, a really important point you made about recognizing common humanity of people, you know, not, not, um, not not looking at people as uh, less than human because they are of a certain nation or of a certain certain pre predisposition predisposition culturally or or politically, you know. So Putin is is, is looking east actually, but he's got this um, these people on the west poking the hornet's nest all the time. So um, what I think the the west needs to look at is how Putin is you know the how he's succeeding to bypass the threat of their sanctions. Um, I mean, obviously, if they, if, if, um, by, by, oh, I'll tell you another funny thing. Biden was being interviewed in the, in the White House and this reporter said, what about the Nord Stream? Oh, well, I'm going to close it down, all right? And she said, well, how are you going to close it down? And he sort of went, um, uh, well, I promise you I'll do it. <laughs> exactly. You know, he had, he had no, no- Sovereignty. No, 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 he's, he's, no, no real, real plans. You know, it's all nonsense, right? So, what I'm, I, I'll just, just sum up here briefly because I want, I would like to hear from, um, from Hannah and Rolf as well. You know, who haven't spoken yet. You know, but um, I'll just say, we need to, we need to get this, um, um, this impasse broken um, between understanding common security the common security the common security of europe and you know in fact when when putin was asked would he join nato he said well why not he you said want it. he said what you know he said why not why not why not but of course if he if he was in nato it, be, it would be the end of nato <laughs> so anyway thank you very much for um putting up with me um i'm gonna pass you back to wolfgang um thank you and this is maybe our chance because our common people will be one of the main victims. We have to pay much more for our gas, our energy. Mm. Uh, Germany is much involved with the markets in Russia, with investments. 40%. So these two conflicts between China and US and Russia will cost us very much. China is our main trading partner now. So uh, it will really break when these conflicts really go hard and the US want to force us now on their side that we should sell them weapons. They want to really uh, 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 divide our relationships to Russia and China. And this will bring Germany very much down. So therefore, I also think that uh, France and Germany are not in agreement uh, mm. with what's going on. They tried with this mm. Normandy, with this Minsk abkommen already. They tried somehow to oppose what they could. But at the end, they are cowards mm. because the Americans have so many things they can uh, destroy you. Now, I, I heard one German politician, he said, when the Americans come to negotiate with you, they come to, hello, my boy, my friend, how are you? And then they come with serious topics. And then you said, I don't want. And at the end, he gets more and more hush. And at the end, he put a file on the top and said, do you know that what I've heard from you, the public should know it? Yeah, this is, uh, at the end, they really blackmail you. I uh, uh, put a link 
in uh, in sort of a, a chat about um, movement in Germany. It's uh, called Sicherheit Neu Denken, Rethinking Security. That um, came from uh, a, a, a Protestant church in uh, uh, yeah, Baden. And uh, it's, it's gaining a bit more um, power, but uh, still not, not enough. It's a vision. Um, uh, Germany uh, to, to make uh, uh, military superfluous uh, uh, until uh, that's just a, a date. Uh, 2040, and I recommend to you to to read the the, the uh, abbreviated uh, version that is uh, translated uh, into some languages like uh, English, Polish, and, and so on. Um, yeah, and then I uh, um, what to mention? Uh, yeah. Uh, Presently in Germany, it's very dangerous uh, 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 that uh, the parliament decides on uh, killer drones. Uh, and uh, there is a, a, a group, um, uh, 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 Bernie, I think Bernie uh, um, mentioned uh, Medea Benjamin. So you will know uh, in Germany, Elsa Hasbach, and, uh, and she, uh, she, together with uh, some other people uh, presently, uh, is trying to reach uh, from SPD, from uh, the Green Party, uh, uh, to, to strengthen. So uh, those members uh, who are Against uh, buying uh, these killer drones, uh, uh, but they have it in uh, uh, their uh, uh, coalition treaty that they will uh, in uh, uh, this legislature they they uh, will uh, buy these kill killer drones, and we have to stand against uh, uh, that. Okay. You know, why aren't we here? Why why are we not hearing from United Nations more on this on this matter? Yeah, which clear have to say that according to Minsk, this inside Ukraine conflict should be solved peacefully. Mm. This is the main point. If this is solved peacefully, they will, Russia will do nothing. I'm sure. They only know they don't. They want a violent uh, uh, solution of these topics. And uh, this will cost a lot of lives, mm. even on, on Ukrainian side, yeah, on both sides of this. Uh, uh, and, and naturally, we normally we need a, a, a resolution yeah, uh, that they say Minsk has now, they had, should take their troops, uh, this is in Minsk, away from the front line. Yeah, then well, the there is, uh, Wolfgang, there is a United Nations Resolution 2202 is, in, is, is uh, central to the Minsk Agreement. Okay, 2202. Right. Okay. Yeah, check it out, all right? Mm, yeah, yeah. You check that out, you'll, you'll see. Now, this is, this is being overlooked. This is the problem. Yeah, this is overlooked. Uh, they even put ignore, even publicly, means yeah. will be not spoken anymore about. It Am seems I there's only a violent solution. No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I this is true. And you know they have uh, uncalled troops from the, from the government of Ukraine beside. There are special forces from what I've heard from Great Britain and America inside, and Nazi troops. So they can do a lot, even if the Ukraine government doesn't want. They can uh, inflame it. Well, I mean, you see this Azov training yes. grannies and so Azov, forth yeah. to, to mm. fight back. Mm. And of course, you, you know, the ideological pedigree of Azov, of course, mm. which, which has uh, this Dolovanga. Uh, yeah, brigades, uh, yeah. insignia, insignia. And, and, uh, <clears throat> of course. This this is one of the few 
SS units to actually be condemned by Himmler for war crimes and to be punished. Uh, and uh, openly wearing these mm. kinds of insignia. And of course, the West ignores that. Oh, you nice. Ukrainian patriots. But at the same time, you, you see the politics inside Ukraine. I know a lot of Ukrainians and they don't dare speak out because you, you get silenced. I mean, the cancellation is quite severe. I mean, I know one or two who, who do speak out, but they do not trust their own government at all. And hold it, I mean, I, I've not only talked with academics, I mean, I, I've been talking with ordinary people. I'm an academic, but I, I don't want to speak to only academics. I want to know what ordinary people on the streets think. And you, and if you go to their place for a barbecue, you drink different kinds of Georgian red wine or Transnistrian cognac, and you, you get a, a perfect conversation. What is what they see it as, and it's not what you see uh, mm. in Western mass media. Mm. Just one point about the Azov Battalion. Um, the uh, again, I'm um, sorry to have to uh, bring up the uh, subjects of uh, the Br British media. All right, the, the newspapers, but um, in there was a photograph in the newspaper of a, a, a an old an old granny. All right, holding this rifle. All right. And uh, she was being trained as a, patri a Ukrainian patriot. You know, she's going to stand up and, and fight for her country. And next, next to her, holding the, how, how, showing her how to hold this rifle, is a member of the Azov Battalion. So the, the picture, uh, people don't even realise, uh, people who, who, who buy this newspaper, you know, they, they, they think that is the, the, the legitimate, you know, Ukrainian army, you know, tra tra you know tra uh, protecting their, their country. So the whole... The whole um, the whole narrative is completely twisted, you know. He's talking about these two countries, Ethiopia and Eritrea, have refused to um, accept loans off the World Bank or the International Monetary Fund. They are determined to um, um, be self-sufficient and autonomous, and they could set they could set the the the, the pattern which Gaddafi tried to set years ago. Uh, Gaddafi had a, had a vision for Africa of a pan-African alliance where everyone was co cooperating together, where they have um, 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 peaceful coexistence. But of course, because Gaddafi refused to accept the American petrodollar and wanted to maintain the, uh, the dinar, and uh, he was assassinated. In fact, I've got a transcript of the 2009 United Nations speech by Muammar al-Qaddafi, all right? which changed my mind. I, I, was, I was taught for many years that Qaddafi was a, was a brutal um, devil, you know, and until I read this United Nations speech, completely changed my mind. I, I, in fact, I transcribed the whole thing off YouTube. It took me three days. I transcribed the whole speech and it's a blueprint for all everything we're talking about, all these issues we're talking about. Um, so uh, if anybody wants some- um, Yeah, I want it. I want um, it. I will send it to you because see what these guys are doing. Um, Afwerki, Isaiah Afwerki is the president of Eritrea. Yeah. And um, he was interviewed on Al Jazeera. And I say he wasn't interviewed, he was interrogated actually. And the guy, the interviewer, was continually trying to tell him, you know, you're still in, in war with Ethiopia. He said, no, we're not in war with Ethiopia. We're not. We're, we're friends. You know, we want to, because they, they both realize that they are in a very powerful position now. If they influence the rest of Africa to, to, to stand, stand, not take the knee for the empire, all right, and stand firm against all this, that Africa could lead the way. Africa could be the actual vanguard of all, all these developments that we're, we're talking about. But the trouble is Africa at the moment is still um, infiltrated by um, extractive um, New people who are explo exploiting the extractive industries, mining and whatever, exactly. for our computers of the cobalt in the Congo and what else, you know. Yeah, I want to come to this uh, African topic. Yeah. Mm. Um, you all know in the start of the, you have heard in the start of the 90s were a lot of racistic attacks on refugees in Germany. Mm. Now, I think you all know. I don't know. Rostock, Hoyerswerda were some of the towns yeah. where they even killed people. Mm. At this time, I was, I was a journalist. Then I went to refugees and said, 
um, they do it because they have no contact to dark skinned people and they have no knowledge why people come here. Yeah, they just, the right wing told them they come because they want to exploit us. So, and then I went to refugees and from this time we, we formed a music group, Black and White called, mm. and went in the, uh, and we reached 500,000 pupils with project days. Why? It's a called the initiative Black and White. Mm. Because uh, I have seen if people come personal in contact, you change your view. And we made combined music, drumming, dancing workshops mm. and information. Mm. You know, these information that we know today, we are all, uh, uh, for, we, we, black people are our grand, grand, grandfathers. Ne? Africa uh, mm. was the, the birth of, 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 of mankind, of uh, mm. Homo sapiens. Ab absolutely, yeah. And absolutely. then we speak, that means we are one family. Ne? Yes. And mm. uh, also from this side, not only mm. from the, the sense of religious or something, but also we know by natural science. Mm. And then um, what happened with the slave trade? and how the world was divided. Mm. Yeah, that those who were uh, more in progress in state building and economy, they used it to conquer the rest and exploit mm. them. So, mm. and our, uh, our development is on the shoulders of Africans, of yeah. the, mm. it's clear, mm. ne? all this. So, and what we, uh, we did then, uh, uh, they formed a, a partner association in Ghana. So, and we were in, I was in Ghana to a workshop three years ago, we made about the reasons why people flee and what they can do to overcome the reasons in their mm. countries. Yeah, this is um, so the, and we with teachers and from this time we are in contact and we have also some contacts um, in, in to Cameroon and to Mali. And uh, now there is a big change in West Africa also. Yeah, these military rulers no, it's not. Uh, uh, it's not clear that this is negative. Yeah. So uh, what in Mali these people say we have to make a new foundation of the country, and they made meetings in the whole country. The first time common people were allowed to speak how they want Mali to mm. be, and from this way they sanctioned this country. When in Chad they made the military coup, the France said nothing. Yeah, they said mm. yes yeah, because these mm. are their guys. But in Mali is now, uh, could be now uh, a change. Mm. And in Burkina Faso, maybe also. So this is very important. You know, their, their, their war against terror only uh, develops more terrorism because mm. you kill so many innocent people who have nothing to do with them. And then these uh, radical people tell you, look, I've told you what the West is. They kill mm. your people, your, uh, mm. your parents. So this was absolutely negative what they're mm. doing. And the really reasons why people do it, perspectivelessness. Yeah, the climate change, which destroys a lot of uh, uh, this, we all have to address. And uh, th uh, now there was a conference uh, over the uh, last three days between Europe and African Union, uh, because, uh, China made this road and, and belt initiative. And now Europe want to contact it in Africa with an own program. So they challenge China now in Africa. And, uh, but uh, what I, till now I'm not, I was not totally inside, but what the really reasons poverty and perspectivelessness was not on the table because they know this would cost them that they have to pay more for the resources mm. and their free market policy. Mm which destroys any chance of developing own industry mm. has to be on the table, mm. but they don't want it. And then uh, this Germany biotech, uh, BioNTech, mm. FITSA, you know, mm. uh, in South Africa, they developed an own inje injection, an own vaccine. Vaccine. And uh, this firm tried to boycott it, mm. to intervene in South Africa that they don't allow it. So mm. also Germany to, uh, uh, rejected to give free the patent. Mm. There's also so mm. there was this this conflict about it, but it's very interesting. You are hundred percent mm. right. What's going on there? Well, tomorrow. It, hold on. Uh, mm -hmm. How yeah, many of you have heard of the Cost of War project, which is running at Brown? Very University. good. Very yeah, good. Brown University, the yes. Brown Institute in the Watson. Yes. No? no, no, the Watson Institute at Watson Brown Institute. University. Yeah, I mean that's a fantastic resource. Very good. Mm. It's a so, private university, no? It's, it's, they have all, it's, it's horribly, no? Yes. How many refugees they have created? 
uh, the, the, the taxpayers, yeah, how much it will cost them for years for all these handicapped yes. soldiers coming back? I mean, they're the only ones who actually do a systematic analysis of the cost of war, the actual cost of war. Uh, where, where also something is going on is in Mozambique, in north of Mozambique. No? Huh. Uh, there is, 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 is okay. a most, uh, most huge gas field in whole Africa. It's the biggest project, economic project in whole Africa. And hmm. uh, Total and Exxon, I think they are inside. And I think, uh, yeah. and they have pushed the people away. Yeah, and uh, yeah. the fishermen, you know it. And, uh, and then um, these people uh, uh, protested. It's really a, a war going on there yet now. They don't report about it. Mm. No? There, there is a, um, and then they interviewed, um, and then there came some Islamists inside. Yeah? If one puts the Quran up, it's key as an Islamistic movement. No? <laughs> and then they interviewed one human rights activist. It was in The Guardian. And they asked them, yeah, the Islamists do it. They said, no, maybe they are responsible for 20%, but 80%, why the people are protesting, yeah, is they, they destroy uh, uh, their background. And there are Americans inside. For Europe is, are the Portuguese inside. And they paid private uh, uh, war groups, yeah, uh, uh, who are also inside. And the people are very much suffering. They cover, they don't speak about it. Is, is, but we should also keep an eye. I just want to tell you, ne, because I saw it beside. So we need so many people, ne, maybe who one care for this, one for the other conflict, ne, that we can hum, somehow be current. Ne, there are so many. Well, many I mean, the, yeah. well the, the Nigerian Delta, too, is another example of such. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know what you can even describe that as being. Exactly. Speak talking. <laughs> right. Okay. There you go. Wow. Perfect. Yeah, right. yes. Oh. Right. This is, um, I'm, there's 34 slides. I'm going to show you one, all right? Because <laughs> we haven't got time for all this. But this is a speech to the United Nations, 23rd of September. Now, issues, this, this is what Gaddafi brought forward. Issues, what he did, he embarrassed the whole assembly. They were squirming in their seats, <laughs> all right? These powerful members of the Security Council who veto the, the uh, desires of the General Assembly at every corner. And, these, and, and Gaddafi read uh, in a really very powerful presentation, brought forward the issues of the function of the United Nations. He said it, he said it needs to be disbanded completely and built up from the ground. He talks about the function of the General Assembly and Security Council, how the General Assembly is trampled over by this Security Council. Now remember, when the, when the United Nations was formed in 1945, there were, there, it was only the Security Council that were the members of it, and they wrote all the rules. This is the problem. Then the, also the International Court of Justice, he said it's a complete joke, all right? The International Atomic Energy Agency, the importance of the African Union, which we're talking about. He was talking about this in 2009. You know, maybe it's what, 14 years ago, whatever. Compensation for colonized countries, a solution to the problem of immigration, the prosecution of warmongers, and a rejection of the two state solution in respect of Israel and Palestine. He, Gaddafi suggested that the Semitic brothers of the Arabs and Jews, all right, they're brothers. They're one nation, they're one, one heritage. He said they, they, they should live in one state called Israetine. One state called, called Israetine with no borders. And two years, by the way, at this, um, at this uh, meeting on the 23rd of September, 2009, Gaddafi welcomed one of, the, one of the gentlemen sitting in the assembly was Barack Obama, who'd just been made the president. And he welcomed his brother, his African brother, to the uh, to the assembly, and two years later, you know what happened. You know, two years later, he he he, he betrayed him. His brother thanked him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So the thing is, I've got the whole. It, it goes on. You know, um, uh, basically, the whole of the all of all of the um, 
this is his speech completely, uh, exactly what he said, you know, and I can send this to you, but at least I can get this working now. This yeah, yeah, yeah. Share yeah, the screen. This so, was a no. point. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, you know, all UNDP, they make uh, the living conditions, they compare. Yeah, you know it. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, I tell you, look up Libya till 2010. Every day, a year it crowed. Yeah. They had more, I think, even more than Russia and Mul Bulgaria. They were above them. The only country in Africa yeah. has really reached another level. They had uh, the, 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 birth, the dying at birth that was a European yeah. level. And uh, this is very important. And after this, you see how it broke down. From yeah. 2011, it, go, it went down. They had the rank, I think, 53 and now 105 in the world. So you right. see their humanitarian inventions, interventions where it lead to. Now it's very good, uh, you can uh, document it. Everywhere that, where they make interventions and what it means for the people. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay the, uh, uh, they have really destroyed the state and the African leaders warned him, the West. They said, if you destroy, uh, put, bring Gaddafi down, you destabilize whole West Africa. And it went like this, it went from mm. there to Mali, you know, it. some say it was uh, not intentional, stupidity. No, it is another point. Uh, I don't know if you know, um, what is this? Ellen Badiou is a very important French philosopher. They're very influential. He said the following point. He said, they can't direct colonize anymore, mm. but they can destroy the states, what they have achieved after independence in escalating the conflicts and especially in the areas where they have resources. And then they cooperate with militias. They give them the weapons and they get the resources and uh, you are very, uh, your life is destroyed if you live in such an area as a hell, he said. But he said it's a capitalistic death drive to death. Yeah, it's, uh, I got it here in one interview. Uh, 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 this is exactly what they are doing. Everywhere where they made interventions, at the end, you have a destroyed state. What they have achieved after independence is backwards and militias are controlling and give them the resources. Though we really have to stop it. There mm. is, there is from, um, uh, there is a libertarian institute from Ron Powell, you know, Ron Powell. He was a presidential candidate from the Republicans. No? And uh, Scott Horton, Scott Horton is the leader of the institute. And he made a book enough if, if, if is enough stop the war on terror, and he made a lot of good videos. How this whole uh, 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 stop if you go Scott Horton, very interesting. So this we have beside Ukraine, you have to make a campaign stop the war on terror, and we need for every country peaceful solutions. Yeah, this might be everywhere mm. in another country, but it's very important. They make now really these people to, to, that they hate us, you know, because mm. many of them th think we are all in the West, we are behind all this rubbish. Also, this uh, should be then another topic. We should really also handle it. Now, this was uh, in the South too. They just want to recolonize their resources. And this all others is, is, is a joke what they tell mm. us. So, that's, we have to, <laughs> so we have some, mm. some tasks. You know, they have a story to justify every of their criminal things they are doing. No? And we have we need always a counter story. We have to, a counter narrative, which we have to develop together. Now, which that people understand what is the, the surrounding the background of, of all this. Um, in, in Ghana, I can bring another topic. In Ghana, um, there's always the same. The opposition party says the, the, the ruling party is bad, bad, bad. Then they come to power and do this, continue with the same rubbish. Yeah? And um, now they have formed a, 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 a above party um, a, a organization in the country um, supported by journalists called Fix the Country. Did you hear it? For me, it is a very good slogan. They tried, said they can't demonstrate, but they did it in Accra. Fix mm. the country. And I think this is, is the, the right slogan. Yeah, not only negative, we want housing, we want jobs. Yeah, all what is in the Universal Declaration, what you need for your life. And they said, me, for me, it uh, doesn't matter of which party you are. 
I want that we fix the country, that we can live here. And um, we had the idea to, to form uh, um, also a network, fix our countries, fix our world. Because we have special tasks in each of our countries. Uh, and then we have some global issues. So, and this uh, is in this movement, what I've heard that the civil society already got stronger towards the politicians in Ghana. Mm. So, and we have a partner association, black and white in Ghana. And they, they also for, uh, made in one of the towns in Sunyani, fix Sunyani on local level, bring things in order. This we ask from you, you are politicians. Yeah? And maybe in this movement, other better people with more competence come up. So me. it was very fantastic to know yeah. you both. Yeah, now, yeah. Then we were in email contact. Yeah. Now I think we can Good bring things forward. Yeah. Likewise, Benny. And Rolf, and thank you very uh, much, Rolf. Wolfgang and Rolf. I'll see you tomorrow night, okay? We'll see us tomorrow night. I'll leave it open. Yeah. Yeah? Thank you.